Start date 4 20 2016. Sup, everyone. Oh, forget it. This is Carrot calling to you from my space cruiser using a narrowband laser light communication beam aimed directly at your audio organs and ocular orbs. This time it's for the review of Halcyon 6. In Halcyon 6, your humanity's last hope, which seems to be going around these days as you take over the defunct and decrepit space station of the same name on the edge of human explored space, and you prepare it and mankind for the inevitable extinction that's been played out for you by a mysterious alien race. Let's see how this space strategy RPG hybrid does its thing. Is it Kirk of old sauntering around the galaxy demanding respect and exploring strange new worlds? Or is it the new Kirk constantly failing to impress and being so worried about being liked that it completely misses the point? As always, if you like the video, eh, maybe subscribe. So here's the review for Halcyon 6. All bullies are cowards, elder god spaceships, and the world's worst admiral ever. Graphics are up first. And please remember, this is an early access title. Call it retro style, call it fat people pixel art, it doesn't really matter. What it does is it eschews the look of current more flashy titles with a slightly comedic, easier to differentiate itself graphical styling that's all about the proper use of the few pixels everything is allotted versus shiny first shaders and PBR lighting. You know, what you get is a fantastically colorful look at a game, I think, with an organic originality to ships and people and places that works well to deliver the artistic elements regardless of the player's place wherever they are in that game world. Now, while not pudgy beach balls with legs like a Kerasoft game, it does have a style that's a little bit different like that, and it's got characters in a unique mix of ways in which they're dressed and presented, does a really good job to make it surprisingly easy to separate them when in particular screens where you're seeing a large number of characters at any one time. Now, ships in the universe itself are surprisingly robust when it comes to design, with each race's ships matching in subtle or not so subtle ways those that sit in the captain's seats, which can be good or bad depending on which alien you're meeting. Once you're in battle, whether you're shooting, smashing, shielding, missling, maneuvering, or holding on to that one last hit point, the special effects are wonderful, and some have a higher fidelity, I've noticed, than the game itself. Now, this is a great way of helping the ships not get lost among all of the effects, and also giving a subtle 3D feel to an otherwise completely 2D presentation. It works really well, and I like that idea. You know, while not stunning graphically, it's concentrated color work and fantastic reliance of presenting that artistic styling regardless of where you are is one of the more level experiences that I've had playing a game in a really long time. There isn't any one location or thing that isn't polished to the same high presentation marks as everything else. As a package, I'd say that Halcyon 6 does what it sets out to do, offer a unique look that works regardless of location and action, and that's infinitely and easily customizable, which is one of the main facets of the title as we move forward. It really is a connection of graphics and gameplay. Sound, music, and voice. And of course, sound is up first, and it's actually a sound hate crime. From the overly crushed low end of the space weapons that damn near made me tear my headphones off the first time I heard them, to the lack of any kind of dynamic range in many of the sound effects, regardless of location. It's atrocious. As someone who rates sound in reviews, I'm not lying when I say that during battles, it's single-handedly the worst sound in any game I've ever had the displeasure of experiencing. Luckily, when you're anywhere else, it's much better, but those sounds in battle need to be torn out of the title completely or completely redone or something within the audio software has been Ferengate. But in the end, I absolutely had a horrible time playing any battles within the game. Anywhere else was fine. Music. Okay, so it's not too shabby. While noticeably elastic in its presentation with a few moments of raising an eyebrow when electric low synth suddenly changed to this rousing orchestra battle tune with no real instrument sharing between those two, it was still good. But what that all means is that the full feeling of the title's music isn't really shared across its locations or actions. You know when you know that you're watching Star Wars, no matter even if Luke is whining for the 33rd time about his life where he's safe and meals are cooked for him, or if Han Solo is trying to fix his ship again. That carryover of theme and instruments is completely missing here. That being said, what's here is good. It's just a bit discordant in its choice, and it's going to be noticeable for some people. And of course, that brings us to voice. None. So let's move on. 
gameplay. As we know, titles like this need to offer a connection of action between their building phases and exploration moments. That's really what ties these RPG strategy style of hybrid games together. And that's obviously something we've seen some games fail at with one or the other area appearing appropriately half-baked. And Halcyon basically has two main parts to its gameplay. First, you start out as a leader trying to get the somewhat defunct Halcyon 6 in tip-top shape. First, what the hell was everyone doing before you got there? Even the Admiral, who decides right at the starting of the game that the best place for him is to be out exploring mysterious explosions and space robberies, hasn't done shit. The game starts out with you taking command of what's the equivalent of a useless tube of steel that no one thought of upgrading, preparing, outfitting, or even sweeping out. So basically, right from the start, you're tasked with the following. One, taking over. Two, actually outfitting the Halcyon with, you know, human stuff, which also means going into the bowels of the satellite to fight off every Tom, Dick, and Slurgoth who's now living there. And three, make your race strong enough to keep a foothold, which means building ships and destroying everyone else's. Or sometimes being nice, which, let's be honest, isn't half the fun. The game has a fairly basic tutorial, showing you how to build ships using materials you have on the space station, as well as travel from planet to planet. First step, there seems to be a lot of first steps here, but anyway, first step is to pick a starting officer from three types, scientist, tactical, or engineering, and depending on what you choose, they can then pilot that kind of vessel. Now, don't forget that, or you will end up in your first game like Admiral Carrick, the sad admiral who had a ship sitting in space dock and a worthless science officer pacing the halls, testing people's reflexes because they had nothing better to do. All the while, as with any space strategy game, you're juggling for basic resources needed for building, teaching people, learning new research, and so forth. Now, you're going to find yourself exploring for some time within space as you search the nearest galaxy to find new materials and bring them back to the station or discover outposts and other mysterious items that can also help you along. But occasionally, you're going to run into an alien race, which, when this happens on the star map, is itself instantly 100% go time. It's like those two guys at a party peacocked out and strutting around when they bump into each other. Let's wrestle. Except this time, wrestling has changed to burn one another to death. You're quickly sent out to a 2D battle screen with your ships on the left and the enemies on the right and you taking actions with each. And this is when Halcyon really goes from just being another unique space strategy game to something really truly enjoyable at its most basic. Here's just one of the parts that I like so much. Battles like rock, paper, scissors, but more like that version you made with your friends at Dynamite, Angry Rooster, and Vulcan Neck Pinch. Because while ships hold somewhat true to the rock, paper, scissors gameplay with skills that both inflict and take damage of statuses they create on enemies, it's the randomness of character skills themselves that throws a massive amount of replayability into the title, regardless if you're a scientist, tactical officer, or engineering. Each comes with its own set of three different starting skills. And now this means that you could have a hard-hitting science officer killing Tasha Yar right out of the gates if a combination is right for craft and captain. This flexibility in fighting is absolutely wonderful to see even from the start and it just continues to grow. It's all about the gamer's drive to utilize a reservoir of deadly skills tactically track to work together in harmony. Halcyon 6 speaks to that planning period that gamers have where you rub your hands together excited because your captain plus your ship equals a combo of skills that inflicts hull breaches while also having the ability to take advantage of it as well. Over time, this means that sometimes a single ship is sort of both of a rock and scissors, cock strutting around. That is, of course, until you meet your match and you will. Every single time I felt like I was Captain Kirk willfully just skipping willy-nilly around the galaxy, forcing everyone to give me their crap, I discovered I was a bit more like which way Janeway, making mistakes and landing in the melting pot of overpowered alien vessels who smote me without breaking the alien equivalent of a sweat. One of the greatest things so far that I've experienced with Halcyon is the fact that I own every defeat. It always feels like it's my fault. The best way to stop dying from happening Happening, though is a delightful mixture of continually unlocking new ship types and uncovering new tech, which is sort of the second half of the two parts that I discussed earlier. One weird thing is when buying tech, there's no indication if you can afford something, so you have to click on an open box to see if you can research something and then close it again because you find out you don't. It's an auto mission and probably just because this is early access. Now, not to be forgotten, there's also foot battle, which is a close approximation of ship-to-ship -ship battles. For example, while cleaning out the space station, your little hardy dudes and dudettes may warn you that they found something and they want to know if you want them to retreat treat or fight. When fighting, you're lined up like ship combat and have another set of skills that again can impart status effects, do normal damage, and a host of other things. For me though, this is actually when the genius of the game started to hit. Some of the best games in these genres are ones that don't just build on the aspects shown at the beginning, though that can lead to excellent titles on its own merit. The true classics, for me at least, are ones that I feel like I'm constantly learning and performing newly discovered actions or discovering new things within the title.
Not just new places, but new gameplay systems. Halcyon nails it, and even hours into the game, all of a sudden you realize that these people you have been just really letting get chewed up in an assorted questionable meat grinder of alien on human battles are actually a bit more human than you thought, with traits and unique aspects about them that affect the world. It's subtle, not altogether in your face either. This is when the game started to feel a bit like an episode of Star Trek to me, and that sort of changed the gameplay halfway through. I mean, let's be honest, Wesley Crusher should have been jettisoned after the 30th time he screwed everything up and almost caused the place to explode. Well, imagine having a bunch of Wesleys. Actually, that doesn't sound right. Imagine having little mini cartoon people, though, with their own ideas, thoughts, idiosyncrasies, and odd things to do. Honestly, it was really surprising to me. Now, that doesn't mean all is well in Halcyon 6. Aside from a couple things I already mentioned, there's a bit more wonkiness, especially with the HUD itself. Sending a ship somewhere requires the oddest left-right corner clicking I've ever seen in ages. Click where you want to go, click on the right edge when you want to tell them that you want to send the fleet, then click all the way on the far left edge when you choose which fleet to send. Very odd. This is an early access title, and oddness is bound to happen, especially in the HUD, which can be changed later. In all honesty, it didn't come close to dulling what I experienced, and what I experienced is, well, that brings us to Fun Factor, actually. Honestly, this game reminds me of the glory of the more seminal series of titles from Kerasoft before they came the feculent turd bags of free-to-play trading gameplay for Grind. Despite not being able to turn the sound up whenever in battle, the fact is the game offers multi-layered strategies in battle, unique locations, diplomatic avenues, and mysterious stories when exploring, and continues to keep its characters fresh and interesting even double-digit hours into the title. I can't easily express the enjoyment of a battle hard fought here over the at danger colony that I had rushed to save upon seeing an alien vessel headed that way, or the hilarity that ensued when I figured out that space pirates were the world's biggest schoolyard bullies running off and trying to make friends whenever their face was delightfully, delightfully punched in. So as you guys know, I rate games on a buy, wait for a sale, rent, or a deep, deep sale if it's a PC, and of course, never touch rating scale. This is a buy easily. Well, it's got some bugs and some HUD issues, and the sound during battles encroaching that sound Jim Carrey made in Dumb and Dumber being set on repeat. The fact is, I'm still sitting here playing the damn thing. Amazing title. So as always, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Maybe check out Reddit. Maybe check out our Patreon. Maybe check out our Steam group. Peace out.